Hey everybody, it's Tim here with Fly Fishing Bover Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying and I am here today to do a little costume designing with you. Uh, we're trying out some new things. I don't know, I think this fits uh, fits pretty good. It's not quite tight enough to show my sh true shape, but uh, anyways, I'm going to try it out. You let me know what you think as we go along on this fly. We're doing a quick Certified tie tonight from badass. episode 12 of season 4. We're going to be doing one of my favorites, this little guy, super simple, it even has it in its name. It's called a simple golden stone, very effective little bug. I'm going to take you through this one. If you don't already have a Seasons 4 kit, which I'm going to be tying out of tonight, you still can grab these guys. Just head on over to www.flyfishingborber.com backslash TNLS4, and you can pick up your package today. For all of you who are watching, please like and subscribe to this video. Let us know that you're here. If you're part of the replay squad, we just want to know that you're here. So leave a comment, uh, leave us a message. And if you go in there and you click that little bell icon, that'll also let you know anytime we do a new video, it'll pop up on your feed and let you know. Let's head on over to the vise and get to work on this bug. What I'm tying with for thread tonight, I'm going to be using some brown colored UTC 70. Uh, before I get working with that, I'm going to go grab some lead, some lead wire. You could do lead free, whatever you like. Um, this is in O2O size. I'm going to do a good section of this fly with it. It is not essential to the pattern if you don't put it in, um, but I do like what you can do with it and the added weight because let's be honest, we know these bugs are on the bottom of the river and that's where we want to put this fly. So I'm going to come over here near the tail and I'm going to start wrapping. I'm going to do uh, the good portion of this fly is going to be all wire wrapped and I'm going to show you how we can actually change the shape of the wire <clears throat> with some forceps or pliers to kind of even give a little bit different effect. I'm going to go like so. Once I get it to about where I think I want, I can tear that piece off. And I'm going to trim off this back one. <clears throat> this lead wire is quite pliable, but still use a uh, cheap pair of scissors or your buddy's scissors, whatever it is that you need to do before you cut it, because it will dull them and you don't want that. Okay. Once I've got that <clears throat> in place and I like where it is, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to secure it really well with some um, thread wrap. So I'm going to start actually just behind them so they don't want to move down the fly. I'm going to work my way up. <clears throat> just doing a really nice coat. Don't have to worry about covering it all up for a, from a color perspective. Just wanting it to not move. Um, then I'm going to bring my thread right back here again. Now before I move on from this next step, what I like to do is I like to go in here. And instead of this round appearance to that... Um, that lead wire, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to flatten it out with some forceps and this will change the shape of your fly. So now if you turn and look at it, it's all flat. Okay, so it's going to, uh, a stone fly is flat on top and bottom and now the materials we put in here will mimic that slightly. Okay, versus it being just a round, um, a round shape. Okay, so what I'm going to do right off the hop here is I'm going to just make sure that that secured that little piece there. <clears throat> I'm going to grab my dubbing. Now you got lots of this dubbing in this in this kit, this stuff here in golden stone color. I'm going to take just a little pinch of it and I'm going to make a tiny little dubbing noodle. Now I mean tiny because it's just going to be, I'm just creating a little, a, a little ball of dubbing to work back against with my biots on the next step. Okay, so I got it like so. All I'm going to do is right at the back here is I'm going to create a nice little ball. It's like that. Okay. And then leave my thread just in front of it. Before I add in my bites, however, I am going to put this very nice size, small gold colored wire, ultra wire. I'm going to tie it in somewhere up here on the, on that lead wire and just work it back, letting my thread wraps carry it to the far side of the fly, far side for me, closer to you. Okay. And I'm going to leave it right there. And now we're going to work with the bites. If you know anything about me and bites, you know that it's a love-hate relationship with these little guys. Very effective, very realistic looking, just not always the easiest to tie in. But working on a, a stonefly that's a little bit bigger does make it easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off. We give you at least three or four in this stack. Go ahead and pull out at least two of them. These guys get easily dropped to the floor too, so be careful you don't do that. And now you'll see that they have a natural curve. Okay, they got a natural curve to them. I want that curve to be pointed out away from the fly. So when I take and tie in this first one on the near side of the fly to myself, first off, I'm going to measure it. I want it to be between three quarters and a full length of this overall hook shank out the back. Okay, so I've got my measurement where I want it. I'm going to switch hands and I'm going to tie it in right on the side here up against that ball of dubbing. 
Okay, now what you can see is going to happen here is I can then grab the butt end of it, adjust it a little if I need to, and you can see that it split, it splayed out and went the opposite direction, and that is what I'm trying to attain out of this. And that's why we tied up against that ball because it makes it want to push it out even more. Okay, so I've got one in there. We're kind of exemplifying um, the length on these biots. We do want them to be quite long. It just gives the appearance of that long tail off the back of a stonefly. Okay, I'm going to match this one to be the same length. I'm going to tie it in this time on the far side of the fly. And again, right on the side of the fly. And I'm going to take some thread wraps so you can see it splayed quite nicely there. I like where it is. At this point, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take thread wraps and secure those butts down. Okay. Don't worry about the underbody appearing maybe a little uneven. We are going to put a ton of material over top and you're not even going to notice. Okay. I'm going to bring my thread back up here about halfway, three quarters of the way up the hook. And we're going to go to our next material. Okay. Our next material is some uh, pheasant, pheasant tail fibers. Okay. And you want a good stack of them. Um, I would literally go to what we gave you and take half, okay? We want a good clump of them. This is going to be um, worked as the back of our fly. It's going to be our covering. Instead of using something like thin skin, we're going to use this, this as a natural material, okay? So I want those tips to be fairly aligned when I tie this in. I'm going to tie those tips in right up on top here. Not super crucial where they start or where they finish necessarily, but I want to flatten them out and bring them all the way back down up against that little ball that I created where I left my biots. Okay. Now that I got them there, I'm going to pull that bite out from underneath. Good. And now we're going to go back to our dubbing. Okay. We're going to make a, a real nice uh, dubbing noodle. This one's going to be quite a bit larger. Okay. We're going to use a ton of, uh, a ton of this dubbing. Don't be afraid about it uh, being quite bulky in appearance even when you're putting it on. You can use a little bit of dubbing wax if, if you like. You don't need to. Um, it can make it easier with some of these with uh, different types of dubbing just to, to make your dubbing noodle and that's totally fine. We are going to make it a pretty nice long one and, and it's going to be pretty bulky because we're going to put a ton of material and this is going to be the overall body of our stone fly and so we need to have a little bit more than we may even think we need. You can see my dubbing noodle is quite thick because we're going to be putting in a lot of this dubbing to make this first portion of the body. You can see I just keep pulling off little pieces and adding it as I go down. I may need more, but I'm going to leave it at this point and see where this gets me. So I'm going to start my wraps right by the biots and where I left that hair. Make sure they're good and touching. And we want it to be quite bulky. Don't, don't worry about it looking like it's a big fat looking fly because that's exactly what we're trying to do. I'm going to need a little more because I want to get up to about two bead lengths back from uh, the front of the fly. When we go to start working on our thorax, it's going to be the next piece. We're just going to um, we're going to build that up even bigger than we've built this up. So I'm just going to add a little bit more here. Take me a little higher up into the fly. Bring that down. Might go back over. Make sure that's bulked up good. And we're about two thirds of the way up the fly now. I'm happy with where that's sitting. So the first thing I need to do is I need to grab all of that pheasant tail. I'm going to lay it over top of all that dubbing I just put in and I'm going to take a thread wrap over top of it secured in place so it's going to look like so that's the back of our stonefly okay now don't cut this don't do anything with it we're still going to use it so leave it there next thing I'm going to do though is bring that wire forward we're going to segment the body of this fly with some nice touching wraps don't need them to be uh, super wide fairly close this gives us that really nice segmentation that we see on the back of those stoneflies Especially if you've ever picked up a nymph and you look at them, it's very obvious that you can see all the segmentations there. We're going to secure that wire down. Go ahead and trim it out or helicopter it out. And now you can see what that did to that body. Really nice segmentation on the top. You're not going to see a ton of it on the bottom just because it pulls into that dubbing, but still you get that little bit of change in consistency. Okay. Now I'm going to go right back to my dubbing. I'm going to make a kind of a not as long a noodle as last time, but still just as bulky. Okay, kind of a bulky little, maybe two to three inches long. We're going to build the first portion of our thorax here and our wing bases. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take and fold that back. And I'm going to take some thread wraps, or sorry, some dubbing wraps back up over top of that. Okay, so I'm almost forcing it back now. About halfway... 
Laid quite a bit in there. Bring my thread back forward. We're gonna pull that back over top again. Get our thread wraps down and locked in place. Okay, now I've left with that. I've got my first portion of my thorax and now we're gonna finish off with a little bit bigger portion right up to the bead. So let's grab our dubbing. Let's repeat what we just did. Make another good dubbing noodle. This one, try not to make as tight because as we put this on, we're gonna pick out some of these fibers as we, um, as we come to the end of the fly. So this one doesn't have to be quite as tight, but make sure there's a good and ample amount of material on it. Okay, now I'm gonna fold this back again. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing I did on that last piece. I'm gonna fold back up over top of it. So I get a bit of a bump there. So we see a definite mark change in size. And then I'm just gonna lay a bunch of wraps in right here. Finish with my thread right behind the bead. Now you can see we got quite a bit bulkier up at the head, which is what we wanna see, a good change. For the last time, I'm gonna bring all this pheasant tail forward. And what you're gonna see is up here, I'm gonna try to splay it with my fingers. So it goes almost out over that bead and makes it really wide in appearance before I pull down and cinch it in. And what you're gonna see is, is that gives me a nice fat looking thorax at the top, just like that. Okay, so I've taken thread wraps right behind the bead. I'm gonna pull those fibers back, take a couple more wraps, and now I'm gonna trim this out. Trim it just like so. And this is currently what I'm left with. Get my buy it back up there. Just trying to hide. That's what I have currently, okay? I like the way that looks. Now I'm gonna whip finish this and then we got a couple more things to do before the fly is done. I take some good whip finish wraps. Don't go crazy because we are gonna put some resin over top of this. We'll set that aside. Now we're gonna start by going to that resin. So I'm gonna go back. Um, this time I'm actually gonna use a little bit different one. I'm gonna go to my Solarize Thin Hard Formula. Just a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker, okay? I'm gonna put a nice little um, dab of this and I'm gonna start it to go out over the bead and come back over this whole thorax, but not down the body of the fly, okay? So I'll show you here. Try not to overdo it. Sometimes the stuff really comes out. And if we can, we wanna keep it basically just on top of the back, okay? So you can see I'm gonna bring it out over the bead and push it back to there. Nice and even. I'm gonna grab my light and cure it while it's where I want it to be. Just like that. Now let's take a look at it from the top so you can see. Just gives me that nice security. Uh, it also gives that a nice little sheen I'm gonna go just a little farther back, add just a little bit more in, edging back onto that wire, come back in here and cure it. And then we're just gonna pick out a little bit of this material and we, this fly will be done. Okay, so go ahead and grab yourself a bodkin if you've got one. If you don't have one, actually what I like using more than a bodkin is I like using the backside of my whip finish tool. So that's a really sharp little hook and normally it's got a better tip on it than our bodkin because we've often put it in glue or put it in other things, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to this underside and to the side. So right where I left my resin there on the side, I'm gonna come in here and start picking out some material. And what this is gonna emulate, it's gonna emulate the gills, it's gonna emulate the legs. I can venture back a little bit. Once I've got some pulled out, pull a little bit from the bottom if I need to get a little bit more. I'm gonna go to the other side, do the same thing. Pull out some dubbing. We wanna have enough that this gives us the appearance of those legs. And then what I like to do is kind of pull on them out sideways, kind of fan them out a bit. If I've got any fibers that are really out on their own and kind of doing their own thing, I'll come in and trim them just a smidge to get them kind of back in line. For the most part, I like that, looks good. Just a couple out there, way out there. I'm gonna grab just a couple more in here. And there you have it, guys. That is our simple golden stone. Don't be afraid to use this one, tie this one. You might even be more willing to leave this one on the bottom of the river because it didn't take as long as all your other fancy ones. Uh, super good fly. Put a few of these in your box. Again, everybody, my name is Tim Hepworth. I am here with Fly Fishing Board for Outfitters and Thursday Night Live Fly Tying. Please go and like and subscribe this video.
Let us know you were here. You're part of the replay squad. We want to know. Leave us a comment. Until next time, guys, and uh, we'll be on next week. We're going to be on episode 13, working on those flies. We'll see you then.